Hello everyone and welcome to the Izzy the Nerdy Christian YouTube channel. Uh, for this particular video, for our final video uh, exclusive to YouTube on Pride Month, we are actually going to be reacting to a Christian rap song that came out a couple days ago called Demon Month. We are going to review this video and hopefully if you're a conservative Christian who cares about the Bible or if you're an LGBTQ person, this is a video that you could appreciate. So don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and follow me for more content like this. Thank you. All right, guys, let's uh, let's get into this. We have a lot to talk about. <laughs> Parents are feeling very divided about this Pride Assembly that's happening today. Some parents believe that Pride and LGBTQ plus topics should not be taught in schools, while other parents don't mind. Yeah. Leave our kids alone. You're not gay. It's the demon that's inside of you. Okay. <laughs> Immediately, we have to stop. <laughs> Wow. Um, okay, let me point something out to you guys from the scriptures here. So uh, let's look at Romans chapter 1. Now, I believe that Romans chapter 1, verses 16 and all the way through 32, uh, is a condemnation of homosexuality, murder, strife, deceit, hostility, gossip, slander, um, and all sorts of other sins. So all of humanity is being condemned. Uh, and that's how Paul is ending this chapter. And I would agree with that. But where, anywhere in this passage or any other passage that people interpret as addressing homosexuality, where does it ever attach demons to this? The answer is it never does once. I think that attaching demonic activity to a human activity that, at least from the scriptures, never has demonic activity attached to it is a very bold and unwise and, I would say, unbiblical thing to do. And it's going to harm the LGBTQ community and even Christians, like conservative Christians, who are same-sex attracted. Um we know from the science and the evidence that uh, people are not uh, same-sex attracted because of demonic activity or these other things. Immediately, he is starting off uh, very dumb. Again, I'm someone who agrees that same-sex acts are sinful because of Romans 1 and other places. I know that there are differing Excuse me, there are differing interpretations, but I don't agree with those interpretations. I don't think that they're the best interpretations of these passages if we're trying to care strictly about what the Bible is teaching. But again, read this in other passages. Demonic activity is never assigned to it. You won't point that way, don't let it try to lie to you. Okay. Uh <laughs> I'm sorry, we have to we have to stop it again. Um I I do want to say that there was, uh, let's let's go here real quick. So there was a study that analyzed uh, half a million people um, and basically concluded that genetics may have a limited contribution to sexual orientation. Uh, this study came out sometime in 2019, uh, and this is from Scientific American. Again, this is, uh, you know, a group and a journal that is supporting, seems to be supporting, um, you know, uh, trans rights and laws and all sorts of stuff, but they are noting that it doesn't seem to be the case that you are born this way. It seems to be genetics have a limited contribution and environment also plays a factor, which is like most things. Um, our tendencies and our, and our personality and characteristics and all those sort of things is a very complicated amalgamation of nature and nurture, right? genetics and science and biology as well as environment and conditioning and and things like that it says here the researchers found five single points in the genome that seemed to be common among people who had had at least one same-sex experience two of these genetic markers sit close to the genes linked to sex hormones 
and to smell, both factors that may play a role in sexual attraction. But taken together, these five markers explain less than 1% of the differences in sexual activity among people in the study. When the researchers looked at the overall genetic similarity of individuals who had had a same-sex attraction, genetics seemed to account for between 8 and 25% of the behavior. The rest was presumably a result of environment or other biological factors. The findings were published in Thursday, published Thursday in the Science Journal, uh, and you can see this study uh, here that you can get access to. Another article commented on this study and said that the gay gene is a myth, but being gay is natural, says scientists. And you can read that article for more in, in Forbes. Uh, but they're referring to this study and basically saying, yeah, there doesn't seem to be a gay gene. Uh, we People should not say that we are born this way, but uh, LGBTQ activity and things like that is natural based upon a limited amount of genetics as well as environment and possibly other biological factors. So that is not me supporting this video, but... Uh, I would at least agree there, and I do think that there are LGBTQ people and uh, LGBTQ allies who would agree at least there. Uh, and, you know, we need to be fair when someone gets something right, and as they say, a broken clock is right twice, right? So, uh, but, <laughs> man, oh man, this video. Uh, let's let's get into this. I'm gonna tell the truth and act like I do not care. Like trying to save you from hell, cause it is hot there. I want to live the way I want, man, that's not fair. But if you go to hell, the love you seek is not there. Even Christian rappers act as us to see yourself. Not tell the truth to God, say to paint your fingernails. What? <sighs> Let, let's go ahead and continue. That ain't it. Oh, I sound legalistic. Cause I don't want my son to ever put on lipstick. Don't make the Okay. Um, here's a really important thing to note, and that is even as a gentle complementarian, I'm going to say that there are divine categories of masculinity uh, of, of masculinity and femininity there are things that god has said men can't do and women cannot do and there are principles in the scripture about men not doing certain things and women not doing certain things uh when it comes to uh dress and attire and things like that but i'm still someone who says that christian women can wear pants right so my views are nuanced um i would say that and, and you have to keep in mind, and I think even the text acknowledges cultural factors with dress and apparel, but concepts of masculinity and femininity, though they have some recourse in divine commands and even in divinity itself, um, they are culturally influenced categories of masculinity and femininity are defined by culture. And so many people have pointed this out because our concepts of masculine and feminine are not the same as, for example, Rome or many other cultures. They disagree on this. It is culturally relevant. Uh, and so there have been times in history where men have done this or that and women have done this or that, that we would look at as more feminine or masculine, that they would look at as the opposite because it's based in time and culture and things like that. And though I myself am not going to be the one putting on, you know, fingernails or lipstick just because I, I have no reason to. Um, and I also don't want people to be confused or anything like that. Um, lipstick and nail uh, and, and uh, nail paint and things like that um, are have been things that men have worn for particular purposes, uh, as far as I'm aware in history, as well as in modern culture today. So I, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I understand. Again, um, I think that he's particularly responding to the idea of wearing these things as a means of showing that you're gay or something like that. And I think that's the concern. Uh, and fair enough, but 
we all need to recognize, recognize that there are feminine boys and masculine girls, and there, there are still boys and there are still girls. Uh, and things like this, the notion that these categories are very strict, extremely strict, at least, um, is what causes a lot of people to just adopt that strictness and then say, okay, I'm a girl now because I decided to play football, right? But you, or I'm a boy, excuse me, because I decided to play football. It's like, well, no, you you might just be more masculine in your characteristics or whatever, but you still are a girl. And so, uh, again, there's no nuance. There's no, no, none of that. I don't, <laughs> okay, let's, uh, let's continue. That post, brother, you should go to him. Pull that 66 cannon out and blow a whole door. Oh, I suck, cause I don't rock with pride. My Disney Plus trying to turn my daughter into my son. God is I, um, <laughs> uh, I think that's, this is just my uninformed opinion here. I could be wrong. I am willing to be wrong. Um. I think that what he's responding to is LGBTQ characters being included in Disney movies and shows. And I actually don't think that that is a part of some um, agenda to try to get your son to become a daughter or your daughter to become a son <laughs> um, or something like that. I, I think that there, uh, because, you know, as I mentioned, Romans chapter one condemns a lot of different sins that Christians accept in stories and movies and TV shows like uh, envy, murder, uh, slander, uh, uh, boastfulness, arrogance, right? Uh, disobedience to parents, uh, heartless and ruthless and so on and so forth, right? Uh, I'm a nerdy Christian, so there are a lot of movies and TV shows that I've liked where characters have done all of those things or felt all of those things. Uh, and so I don't see why we would, as Christians, would treat homosexuality in media as anything other than that. Now, obviously, we don't want murder or these other things in children's shows. And so I I made a video talking about this that you can see in my Pride Month series, and I tried to be a little more nuanced in my approach there and said, maybe I could be wrong, but there could be a way to do this. Um, but again, I, I don't think Disney is trying to turn your daughter into your son or your son into your daughter. I, that's That to me is just a part of Christian and conservative panic around this issue. And I made a video talking about this, but I don't Christian panic is a legitimate thing. Just look at the satanic panic, for example. Um, but it's something that we need to stop and we need to actually look at things and view reality as being much more nuanced than than how this video is portraying things. Come and gotta have my Bible stay close. But until then we are taking back the rainbow. Straight crash. I don't rock with demon money. Keep messing with the holy God and you gon' see the sun. You cross the line with the kids and I don't need a gun. Jesus coming, you gon' see that he don't rock with demon money. Um Wow, okay. Um a couple things. Symbols mean whatever you want them to mean. That's why they're symbols. That's why they're symbolic. So LGBTQ people using the rainbow as symbolic of what they represent rather than symbolic of God or God's promises or something like that is fine because symbols mean, again, whatever we want them to mean. Uh, they don't necessarily have objectivity to them. And so, uh, especially I would say with the rainbow in the context, because uh, it's cool that if if you want to use it as symbolic of God's promise, that's totally fine. Let's do it up, right? But again, if, if someone else wants to use the rainbow as a symbol of something else, that's fine too. Um, furthermore, this is not demon month. <laughs> Like, 
again, the scriptures do not attach um, masculinity, femininity, uh, um, homosexual activity, gender dysphoria, anything. None of that is ever attached to demonic activity. Not once. And so this whole idea is unbiblical. Again, as someone who condemns same-sex activity from because I agree with the Bible, I would also condemn this entire concept of calling Pride Month Demon Month because of the Bible. Hey, I don't rock with Demon Month. Nah, real men and God don't rock with Demon Month. Let's boycott the devil. I don't need a gun. Jesus coming here. Go see yeah. the he don't rock with Demon Month. I don't need a gun. Jesus coming back for blood and I don't need to run. I'm storing up my treasures. You can have your demon fun. You think you a god, but you will never be the one. After Jesus hits you with the double edge, the deed is done. You will never... Notice all of the threats and the weaponization of the Bible to attack people. Uh, again, I am not saying that you cannot condemn actions. Of course you can. I, again, argue that Romans 1 does that, okay? So that's not the issue here. But the way that these people are going about doing this is wrong, number one, and as I mentioned, unbiblical. This is a unbiblical use of the text to condemn a movement that you're disagreeing with, and it's extremely unfortunate. I have the rainbow, that's God's promise. This time he gon' hit y'all with volcanoes. You celebrating sin, but in the end it won't be bueno. And feminine men don't make it because the Bible say so. Question. <sighs> the Bible does not say that. <laughs> Biblical characters take on feminine attributes. <sighs> Oh man, let me let me show you guys something. Just look at how many times God is compared to a mother or some feminine image. This happens this, even in the New Testament. This happens a lot. Um check out my theology talk series. My first video was on the gender of God and I mentioned the fact that even in church history, just look up quotes from churches, uh, from church fathers, they will describe Jesus and God as with feminine imagery. So this concept, uh, and again, there were characters in the text that have more feminine attributes. And so if, and like I said, even God displays for the people of God, feminine characteristics. So this whole idea that feminine men don't get into heaven is unbiblical. You won't find that in the text. You can be a feminine man and a masculine girl and still be a girl or boy who is heterosexual. Um, that is not a problem. And I find it very interesting that they don't quote a Bible verse. Um, obviously, this is a music video format. You can only do so much, right? But again, this is this is ridiculous here. Do homosexuals make it to heaven? No. Does mankind ever learn a lesson? No. Don't want to use... <sighs> again, there is no nuance here. Um, you will... There are conservative Christians who are same-sex attracted that will make it into heaven because they are submitting themselves, their attraction, all of that to God and identifying in Christ and not in their sexuality. They'll make it to heaven. Uh, it's the it's people who are unrepentant and who engage in same-sex acts and are uh, living in this kind of way. Those are the people I would say would not make it to heaven. Uh, I'm kind of open to the idea of postmortem salvation and all of that, but that's beyond the the scope of this discussion. Um, so again, there's there's no nuance, there's no understanding, um, a lot of condemning. There isn't any love. 
Uh, I agree that there is condemnation in the gospel, but there is also love in the gospel. And only showing one or the other without balancing them, I think, is a distortion. Lose it, but you know I got a weapon and it go boom, boom. Clear the room, Second Amendment. <laughs> That's bold. Look, everybody went well, but I would never bet vote. LGBTQ gon' burn dry like yo mama French toast. I'm ten toes. And this the remnant season chunk. Jesus coming, you gon' see that he don't rock with demon month. Straight pride. I don't rock with demon month. Keep messing with the holy God and you gon' see the sun. You cross the line. And why are you... So you are going to make a music video in which you as a Christian are depicted as randomly bullying someone who is supposed to represent the LGBTQ community. What? <laughs> what are you achieving? <laughs> what do you think you're doing, bro? Huh. <sighs> Oh yeah, you look so cool standing there in your unbiblical ridiculousness. <laughs> you know, honestly, what would have been a lot better is two Christians coming together to rap about men's mental health. That would have been a lot better than <laughs> than uh, what we got in this video. Or if you were going to make a song about the LGBTQ community from a Christian perspective, have some nuance. Right? Don't just. It's not Demon Month. <laughs> God, this is so bad. Again, guys, this is coming from someone who condemns same sex activity. Okay? I'm not saying don't do that. But people, Christians, you need to be more loving, respectful, more caring to these people. You need to have nuance and you need to have biblical understanding. And I think the biblical understanding is what is what's going to produce the nuance and a proper understanding of these issues and how we relate to them. And saying that no one is gay, it's just demons, is not nuanced, not biblical, and not how Christians should go about doing this. Wow. Just, just wow. Uh, definitely, I have a series called Christians Stop Being Goofy for a reason, and this is definitely a big Christian Stop Being Goofy moment. <laughs> wow. Wow, wow. Okay. Um, so, uh, if you guys disagree with me at all in the comments, feel feel free to comment, right, and let me know. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, follow me for this kind of content. If you want to see a Christian who actually handles these topics well, I would encourage you guys to check out Dr. Sean McDowell, uh, Dr. Gavin Ortland, um, and there are many others that they can connect you to that do a much better job handling this issue than these two Christians and the people that I see in the comments. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys next time. Thank you.